So basically, we live, most people live in self-inflicted prison walls of mediocrity. Hmm. Yeah, it's true. But this is the year to break out of that because you'll never get there without changing your whole perspective. Ephesians chapter 3.20 says, How t- Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us. Amen. Here's a quote out of my book. I'm writing this here out of my book. Sadly, I was 40 years of age when I first saw those Rocky Mountains. To say I was overwhelmed would be an understatement. But I can remember being there and thinking, why didn't I do this earlier? This book is called Unfinished Business. It's about going someplace that you should have already been to, but for the same reasons I never made it to the mountains, you have hesitated. Your no training said you could not afford it, or you did not know how to do it, or various other reasons you used to talk yourself into being ordinary and average. But I want to remind you what the Lord said to me that night. Why are you not up there? I want you in the top 10. I want you to get that $100,000 bonus check. I want people to see my greatness in you. So my word to you in this provision conference 2022 is, why not you? Warp speed, why not you? So where do you want to go? That's the first question you have to answer. Where do you want to go? In the 1800s, not many ways to get around except the horse, wagon train. If you wanted to go to Sacramento, California from the Missouri River, it would take you about uh, four months, about four months. Now, between 1835 and 1855, about 10,000 people died taking that journey. About 4% of them died from Indian attacks. You would say, well, who would do that? Go across raging rivers, mountains, all this danger. Well, hundreds of thousands of people did it. Hundreds of thousands. Now, if you didn't want to go across wagon train, you could go down by boat down to Panama before the canal, and you would get off one boat, take your stuff across land to another boat on the Pacific. If you like poisonous snakes to malaria, that would work. (laughs) And that would take you four months. Or if you didn't like that, you could take a boat clear down around Cape Horn, down around uh, South America, and that's some of the most dangerous waters you could ever try to take a ship through. And that's about six months, and people didn't make it that way. So most people went with the wagon train. So if you can imagine for a moment the sales brochure for that event, just imagine. (laughs) Here's here's what a title would say. Wagon train to California. We've only lost 10,000 people over the last 20 years and only have had 4% die from Indian attacks. Scenery is magnificent. Sign right here. You think people would sign up? Hundreds of thousands did. Why would they sign up and take on that? Because their vision was bigger than the obstacles that was holding them back. Your vision has to be bigger than the obstacles that you see in your path, either believed or real. They're still valid in your life. You have to see past that. You know, you ask people, tell me your vision. Most people have to stop and think, do I, do I have a vision? <laughs> if I asked you today, tell me your vision, would you hesitate? You go, Let's see, I think my vision. Well, you know, you can tell what your vision is by listening to what you talk about. Listening to what you talk about. You've already talked about it. So your passion is going to come out of your mouth. And the problem is, and the reason why people spend five hours a day watching television is they have no passion for anything. They've been dumbed down to the point of just being content and not believing they can do anything, right? There was a survey taken about uh, travel. It was in Forbes magazine. It said 85% of people desire to travel. 60% already have the places they want to see listed. But 11% have never traveled out of the state they were born in. 54% have never visited more than 10 states. 13% have never flown on an airplane. 40% have never left 
the country. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. They had the desire, but they never did it. That's interesting. Well, here's what I say about that survey. They had a desire, but, you know, your, your desire has to be bigger than your butt. Right? <laughs> That's how it is. I met a man on a plane once. We were talking. We began to chit chat a little bit. And, you know, we, what do you do? What do you do? And so he says, I own a bakery. Uh, it's, in, it's in Boston. You know, I just left my corporate job. I just started it. Uh, this is its second year in business. I said, well, how's it going, you know? And we have bakeries where I live at. You know, they make the wedding cakes and the cookies and things. He said, well, second year, we just finished our second year. We did 20 million. I about dropped my cup of Coke. I said, what? Wait a minute, you, this is your second year in business. You did $20 million in a bakery? He said, yeah. He said, look, I didn't, I didn't open my bakery to make the wedding cakes, cookies. So I started my bakery to, to deal with corporations and big companies. I started my bakery to bake big things. See, he didn't start his bakery to make a living. He started his bakery to change his life. Speaking of bakeries, let me quote another part of my story out of my, out of my book here. This is uh, not my story, but a story I put in the book. I've, t- I've, I've talked about Cordelia Harrington over the years. I'm now quoting. A mom of three boys who was a single mom working in real estate and trying to find a more stable field to work in. She thought buying a McDonald's restaurant might give her more time to spend with her family. You know, real estate calls you all times of days and nights and all that. She ended up owning three McDonald's stores. At the time, McDonald's was in the process of planning to open another bakery for their buns. And Cordelia was put on the bun committee. Her assignment was to give her input on the buns that McDonald's served by the millions, how they tasted, and how they made them. She took lots of notes. Although she was working to help McDonald's with their bun project, she was secretly taking notes for herself. She felt that she could build a better bakery than what McDonald's was looking at. Now, she had no experience in building a bakery at all, nor did she own one. She presented her plans to McDonald's, and they rejected it. But after 32 interviews and four years later, they decided they would buy their buns from her. The problem was she didn't have a bakery. (laughs) She says... She had to borrow $13.5 million and empty all of her bank accounts to build this bakery. She says it almost took her under. Well, to make a long story short, the buns you are eating today at McDonald's, Chili's, Ruby Tuesdays, KFC, O'Charlie's, Perkins, Pepperidge Farm, et cetera, et cetera, were all baked at her bakery, the Tennessee Bun Company. It is known as the fastest automated bakery in the world, delivering 9 million baked goods a day for 1,500 customers. And Keith Patrick delivers them. You deliver their stuff? Well, good for you. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. To, you need to buy some more trucks, brother. <laughs> Nine million baked goods, man. You need to get, get in line for your trucks. So let me ask you, are you, making, are, are you making a living or are you living? Are you making a living or are you living? This conference is all about acceleration, all about acceleration. 